Visit us at Eduvo. Thank you for calling Eduvo. With structural pseudo classes, we can write more efficient CSS because we're able to target elements based on their position in the HTML document. So let's continue with pseudo classes by next taking a look at how to select first, last, and only child elements. To demonstrate how structural pseudo classes work, We'll use an unordered list as our parent element. So this means that the list items nested inside are the child elements of the UL. In the CSS file, I've already added a few simple styles to the unordered list and list items, which as we can see here in the browser, the parent UL is outlined by this dotted gray border. So let's say we only need to select the very first list item in this unordered list. We can use the first child structural pseudo class to do just that. So in our CSS file, right below the structural pseudo class comment, we will go ahead and select the list item by typing li followed by colon, then first dash child. We'll then give our first child element the background color property and the value steel blue, followed by a color of white. So this will select the list item that is the very first child of the UL parent. So when we save the style sheet and refresh the browser, we see that the very first list item in the unordered list is the only one that has the background color and text color styles applied. Similar to first child, the last child pseudo class lets us select an element that's the last child of its parent. So if we make first, last, and save the style sheet, when we refresh, now we only see the styles applied to the very last list item or the last child. So no matter how many list items we add or remove from this unordered list, the very last one will always have the blue background color and white text color. So these can be very useful when styling lists or navigations. So for example, say we want to remove this unnecessary blue border here in the last list item. Well, we can easily do that by adding the border none declaration. So I'll go ahead and add the border property and the value none. So when we save this and refresh the browser, we see that the bottom border is no longer there. So instead of creating a separate class just for that last list item in order to remove the border, we can easily do it with the first or last child selectors. And like I said, it will always have those styles no matter how many list items we add or remove. So here I've added two more. And when we refresh that, the very last list item still has the styles applied. Just go ahead and undo that. Finally, the only child pseudo class will target an element if it's the only child of its parent. So in our style sheet, if we simply type colon only dash child, then we give it a background property and the value light coral. When we save the style sheet and refresh the browser, notice how it only targets the unordered list because the UL element is the only child of the body element. Again, these list items here are just child elements of the UL. But if we add another element to the body, for example, I'll go ahead and add an H1 element here above the UL. When we save it and refresh it, it no longer selects the UL because it's no longer the only child of body. The H1 is its sibling. 
in our HTML, if we then nest some tags in our list items, for example, I will add a B tag to this first list item. Then I'll add a span tag to the third list item. These new tags are now child elements of these list items. So if they are the only child of a list item, they will also be selected by this only child selector. So when we save our HTML file and refresh the browser, we see how the browser targets those only child elements we just added to the list items. And if we add a sibling element inside one of these list items, for example, I will nest another B tag inside the third list item. When we save it and refresh, again, the span is no longer selected because now it has a sibling element, the new B tag we just added. To make our pseudo class selector more specific, we'll need to include the selector we want to target. So I'll quickly add another span tag up here in the heading one. Now in our CSS, I will go ahead and add span in front of the pseudo class. So this means that we will only select a span if it's the only child in its parent. So when we save it and refresh, we see how it only selects the span element inside the heading one. Because again, it is the only child that is a span inside of an H1. This other span element here has a sibling selector. Again, if we then change span to B and refresh the browser, it then selects the B element that is the only child of its parent. In a later video, we'll find out how to target the child elements in between the first and last child with more specific structural pseudoclasses. Like the previous selectors we've discussed, Pseudo classes have excellent browser support. These basic selectors are just some of the many ways we can target HTML elements. We're just getting started. The exciting part is that there are many more selectors we can use to make our style sheets cleaner and more powerful. They're coming up in the next stage.